I'm joined in the studio now by Mohammed El Masri, he's a professor at the Doha Institute for Graduate Studies. Good to have you with us uh, on the programme. Great deal of speculation going on right now and no real hard facts about what might happen next, especially when we see um, the rocket fire from uh, Lebanon into, into northern Israel overnight and whether this is the retaliation that everybody's been waiting for. What's your general assessment of what's going on? Yeah, my sense is that that's not the retaliation, that that's maybe a, a kind of warning shot. Um, but if you look at what's transpired, Iran is in a, is in a difficult uh, position. They don't want an all-out war with Israel. Uh, all of the analysis suggests that they're not prepared for an all-out war at this time. Um, on the other hand, they have to respond. It was a very provocative act uh, to uh, attack a, a, a protected site, a diplomatic site, a consulate. Um, and so uh, Iran has to respond in some way. Uh, but if it responds, it's, it's kind of a balancing act. Uh, if the response is deemed too meek, uh, it will uh, look, the Iranian government will look bad inside of Iran, in front of its own public. On the other hand, if they respond in a way that is too strong, then they risk um, this kind of all-out war, a major response from Israel. And there have been some back-channel communications between Iran and the U.S., and the U.S. Su has suggested to Iran that if they respond, it should be something uh, sort of along the lines of something minor. Yeah, we talked uh, in the last 24 hours with other analysts about back-channel communication does happen. It, we're not privy to it, nor is the general public. We have to assume something is happening. The U.S. says that, as you say, it does want to de-escalate uh, the situation, but it's also sending messages to regional capitals, hoping that they too can put pressure or get the message across to Tehran. How do you, again, assess the role of countries or, or capitals like Amman, Doha, Cairo, mm -hmm. even Baghdad? I think it's interesting that we're having a conversation about pressure being exerted on Iran. I mean, mm -hmm. that's a fascinating uh, discourse because it was Iran that had its uh, 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 consulate attacked. It wasn't the other way. It just way. shows that America's worried, really, aren't they? They are, they are. And I think it shows the extent to which Israel is able to wield influence to possibly, and we have to emphasize possibly because it hasn't yeah. happened yet, but possibly drag uh, the United States into a war with Iran. This is something we have to remind viewers, this is something that Israel has wanted to do now for 15 or 20 years. There have been successive American administrations that Israel has tried to convince to go to war um, with Iran. Israel would like nothing more than uh, for the United States to help it or for the United States itself to uh, uh, attack the, the Iranian regime and its, and its nuclear uh, program. And administrations in the United States have, resist, have resisted that. They've resisted taking the bait. But Biden is more deferent to the state of Israel than any president we've seen in recent memory. And I think we're getting dangerously close now. Uh, the messages that the U.S. is sending, they, first of all, they did not censure Israel after this illegal attack on, on the consulate. They've sent the, the head of central command to the region to strategize uh, with Israel. They're sharing intelligence. They're warning Iran. And this is, uh, uh, th these are all messages uh, as to what might be uh, coming next. We don't want to give the impression, uh, certainly from our correspondents in the US, who are also advising us, that you know, not everybody in the White House or in the State Department is fully behind the US stance that we are 100% behind Israel. We've seen State Department officials resign. We've seen other sorts of pushback from the Biden administration. He himself is also walking a very fine tightrope, isn't he, for sort of the wholehearted backing of Israel to looking behind his shoulder and thinking, who's going to support me as I head towards this presidential election? Yeah. I mean, it's stunning to me as an observer to see the extent to which the US is still supporting Israel six months or six and a half months into this, despite all of you know what we've seen with the genocide charges and, and everything else, uh, the U.S. has lost standing. Biden is really struggling in the polls. If you look at the opinion polling data, especially the data that has come out recently, it's quite damning uh, for Biden. And indications are that there's a real chance now that Biden's going to lose this election uh, in November to Donald Trump. That's something that Democrats obviously don't want to see. Mm. Um, yet the White House hasn't shown a willingness to really change course or use its leverage to, to pressure Israel into uh, a ceasefire. It looked like there was some uh, shifting momentum with that, con that letter from con congressional Democrats about a week ago. Nancy Pelosi signed uh, off on that or sign that letter, and now she's kind of walking back uh, her position. And so the U.S. is right back to this kind of 
ironclad support of Israel. And that's the word that Biden used mm. just yesterday. We'll continue to unpick this throughout the day as the situation develops. Mohammed Al-Masri, thank you.